I haven't built a computer from scratch in quite some time. I do fix them periodically, but that's just minor troubleshooting tasks. Recently, my son has been wanting a new computer. Because I want him to keep it on a budget of his own, I thought I'd build him a case made from PVC. To see how I do this, stay tuned. What you see is my sketch of a PVC computer case done in Microsoft OneNote. My plan is to have a stacked modular three-level skeleton that will house different sets of parts on different levels of the case. I'm not exactly sure about case sizing and how everything will attach to the case, so I'll cross that bridge when I get there. But for now, let's get started. Lucky for me, PVC design problems are easy to fix, so if things don't work out as planned, it won't be too hard to make design adjustments. I've decided to make the footprint of my case a square for ease of construction. This allows me to set my table saw to 14 inches and cut all the PVC pipes to that one length. I also want to implement a sliding rail system for ease of case design. I'm not sure if that's an accurate name for it, but you'll see what I mean once I start constructing the case. To create this sliding rail I mentioned, I'll need to bore out the inside of the T to allow the joint to slide across the PVC pipe. Once I start doing the construction, you'll get a better understanding of how everything will work. What I used to bore out the raised portion inside the T was this 1 in 1 16 inch hole saw. It's close in diameter to the 3 quarter inch PVC pipe that fits the T. Before I do any boring though, I need to modify the blade of the hole saw. Saw blade teeth usually have an alternating pattern from side to side. I want to push in all the outward leaning teeth to prevent the hole saw from sticking to the plastic as it cuts into the inner sides of the joint. Now that I'm ready to bore out the sliding rails, I'll take 9 of the test fitted rails and bore through the tees on each side. Notice that the hole saw slides into the tee as easily as a pipe would. Due to the friction of the joint sides pressing against the hole saw, I can only drill through half of the tee at a time. One last thing I need to do before the T is able to slide across the PVC pipe is to cut a slit in the T. An additional step I did after cutting the slit was running the hole saw through each T once more just to make sure all the T's are bored out as cleanly as possible. Find a level surface. I also used a strip of wood in this clip but I found it's not needed. Press one of the T's onto the pipe until it bottoms out. You may have to do this on the floor using all of your weight. Press the other T onto the other end of the pipe. Insert two equal length pipes equally into each of the T's. Lay everything flat on the surface. More than likely, one of the ends of the pipe should be lifted up. Adjust either pipe until the ends both rest as flat on the surface as possible. On the floor, press the T's and pipe together using all of your weight. On the flat surface, check that the two pipe ends still rest flat. If not, make adjustments and recompress everything if needed. Drill a hole alongside any one of the joint connections, then screw together. Do the same with all the rails. Here's all the parts for the PVC case. A test fit of the rail over the PVC pipe looks good. The T is snug, but it will slide with a little bit of persuasion. For this part of the construction, I have to make one of the sliding rails stationary or non-sliding. This rail has to be screwed to the frame to prevent the frame from collapsing due to the ability of the rail to pivot and slide on the frame. For myself, I'm going to secure the rail as far to the end of the frame as possible to allow as much room as possible for computer parts. Be sure to level the frame to a flat surface before screwing the stationary rail in place. I can now construct each level with three sliding rails, one of which is stationary, and the end cap or T. 
For now, I'm using a short stud of PVC pipe to hold each level of framing together until I get a better idea of how much space I need within each level. At that time, I can cut the PVC pipe to the appropriate length for spacing out each level. This is practically the completed case. The only things missing are the small parts like standoffs to hold the motherboard in place and maybe some brackets to give cards and drives a place to mount onto. For miscellaneous parts, probably the most important thing that I'll need to finish building my computer are the motherboard standoffs. I picked up this kit from Amazon. The link to this kit is in the description. I've never built a computer case before, and I'm used to having a prefabbed case with standoff holes pre-drilled exactly where they need to be. Now that I have to create the standoff mounts on my own, I had to think this through for quite some time. The idea I came up with was using these conduit clamps. They fit perfectly around the 3 quarter inch PVC pipe and were the most inexpensive way I could think of to create the number of standoffs needed to mount the motherboard. For the standoffs, sand down the excess plastic on the bottom of the conduit clamps. Cut a piece of wood or plastic to fit the bottom of the clamp as shown in these different views of the same piece. The two outer holes are for screwing the clamp to the flat piece. The hole in the center will hold the standoff. Notice that the hole in the center does not go all the way through. This is done with a stopper on the drill bit. I usually use a small block of wood for a stop by drilling through it, then adjusting how far into the drill I insert the bit, leaving enough of the bit protruding to not drill through the piece. The size of the hole should be a snug fit for the standoff. Glue the standoff in the hole using crazy glue. I'm not going to build an entire computer, but I am going to demonstrate how to install a couple of major parts, starting with the motherboard. I've already lined up the rails to their rough location under the motherboard, and just need to fine-tune their alignment. Line up each PVC standoff rail with any straight row of mounting holes on the motherboard. Then slide the rail in under the row of mounting holes. I used a putty knife to open up the T at the ends of the rail to make sliding it on the frame of the case easier. Line up the standoff screw hole with the motherboard mounting hole, then screw the standoff screw in place. Leave the screw loose to allow the board to adjust as more standoff screws are added and also to allow some final rail adjustments later. Once all the screws are in place, the motherboard should be about this loose. Notice that the rail standoffs are not equally level. Slide the unsecured rails, which should be two of them, one way or the other until the flat tops of all the standoffs are level. Once all is level, the screws can be tightened. I'll next find a place to mount the PSU. The ideal mounting location should allow the power cable to reach the motherboard easily and also leave room next to the PSU to mount other accessories. Adjust the rails to support mounting the PSU. Remove the levels of the case for better access to the level being worked on. This is one of the many benefits of a modular and morphable case, which I'll demonstrate more of soon. I'll mount the PSU using the conduit clamps around the PVC rails and glue directly to the bottom of the PSU. There won't be much stress put on the conduit clamps, so glue to hold them in place should work well. Try not to get any of the glue on the rails, otherwise the mounted PSU won't slide across the rail as designed. Once the glue dries, the PSU will hold securely to the rails. Most other accessories can be mounted in the same way as the PSU, as long as there's a flat side that can rest on the rails. Now I need to see where I'll run the power cables from the PSU to the motherboard. One thing I had forgotten was the PSU has two cables to the motherboard and both connections are on almost opposite sides of the motherboard. The ability to rotate any of the levels 360 degrees can be a useful feature. 
This is where the extremely flexible design of this case shines and allows me to find a configuration that allows both cables to be connected. One last feature I want to demonstrate is the ability to swap levels between each other. As long as the cables and hoses are of adequate length, any level should swap easily with another level. For myself, I plan to put the motherboard on the top, the PSU and drives in the middle, and the water systems on the bottom. So this is my morphable case built for my son. He has a long ways to go to build this computer. He has to buy everything on his own unless he can get individual items for his birthday or other occasions like that. As I finish this video, I don't have a computer to build using this case, but by the time I publish this video on YouTube, the thumbnail should be of this case with a fully working system. This project was a nice learning experience for me. I haven't researched computer builds in a long time, and times have changed quite a bit since I last built a system. Now I am sort of looking forward to helping my son to build his system. I hope this is a case that can help you build any system configuration you want. That's all I have for now and I'll catch you in the next video.